Hey guys, welcome back to Mountain Murders. I'm Heather and with me as always, I say as always, you weren't with me the other day, but here's Dylan. Hey guys, how are you doing? You're alive and kicking, right? Yeah, I missed everybody on that last one, but I, I was really interested in hearing from your mom and her talking about country living. Yeah, well, you know, it was a little bit of a departure from what we normally do here at Mountain Murders, of course, but still in the realm of Appalachia. So I thought some people might be interested in hearing just a good old country woman talk about growing up country. <laughs> She's definitely country, but that's cool. And yeah. I think I some think people so liked her. it. Yeah, I think so. We've had a lot of uh, downloads and listens on that episode. So I think it definitely um, it was a good choice. So this week, we're going to shake things up just a little bit. But before we get started, we have some folks to thank, right? Yes, we do. Uh, we have uh, Gary Ramsey, who upgraded his Patreon to our top tier. Thank you very much, Gary. Yeah, thanks so much. And I um, still need to get up with you and see you talk about some music and stuff. And uh, we have uh, a Christy Garrett. Thank you, Christy. Brand new patron signed up through Patreon. Yeah. And of course, you know, with our Patreon, you might be asking, well, like, what is Patreon? How does that work? Well, all of your money that we bill you, which is like once a month, and we have low levels. Um, it's not like you're paying a fortune, but that money goes to help support the podcast. You know, we have to pay for things like uh, hosting service, you know, equipment upgrades, that kind of stuff. So it just kind of helps keep the podcast alive. You know, of course, this is a labor of love. We do it because we like it, not because we're making uh, millions, despite what some people seem to think. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not making hundreds even, but, you know, that's not the point. We enjoy it. And, uh, yeah, they definitely help us take some of the burden off of us to uh, keep us alive. Yeah, so we, um, of course, last week talked about the Corpsewood Manor murders. And before that, we discussed two serial killers. And we're back this week with a brand new episode. And as I mentioned, we're shaking things up a little bit. So normally, I'm like the the straight guy, and Dylan's like the funny color man, right? Who says stupid stuff. Well, yeah, I was trying to be nice. But, yeah. you know, you're, you're the one that delivers, like, the color commentary. Yeah, I think they've noticed that you're the facts. Just the facts, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Well, this week we're shaking things up in that we're going to put Dylan in the driver's seat. He is at the helm of this week's Mountain Murders episode. So, Dylan, can we just give him a little bit of information on our process, the research, the writing? Because it's kind of funny, and I feel like it really explains our personalities and our marriage a little bit. Right. Okay. So, I'm like very detail-oriented, organized, sit-down, focus. Whip up, you know, all the research, get the story going. And it takes Dylan like days and days and days. And then he's got like a paragraph worked out. Well, yeah. And, yeah. It's a good paragraph, though. So what I'm trying to say here is that you're a procrastinator Well, other, times a thousand. Well, yeah, other stuff gets in the way. Yeah. Like, you know, I see a butterfly go by and I'm like, ooh, a flutter by. He totally is. He's like, ooh, something shiny. But I think that's funny because it's it's super just how we are. I think I'm like a doer. I'm a get shit done kind of person. And you get shit done, but it just might take you like six months. Yeah, but, you know, I'm deliberate and, um, you know, you'll never, um, I don't make uh, rash moves and decisions. Right. yeah. So just like when I ask you, hey, baby, can you like hang these curtains for me? Or can you help me hang these pictures or something like that? You say, oh, of course, and eventually you will do it. It might just take a few months or a year, right? Right, but when I get started, I'm hell on wheels. Then you're, you then you're on that. a roll and you're ready. Right. So it's kind of like that with the story. So this week, I get to just sit here and listen, be told a great story, and maybe chime in a little bit. So I'm eager to get started with this. Okay, so we, we'll dive right in. Are you um, feeling confident? Are you ready? Yeah, I'm a, oh, I'm a little nervous, you Do know, because pep talk. No, Do you um, need a hug. No, I think uh, you you've, you've torn me down enough. So no, I'm ready to go. Just kidding. Well, that's what I'm here for, baby, to build your self esteem. No, I, I feel pretty good about this because uh, I'm, I've known of this case before. See, I know a little bit about this case because I kind of remember it, but. It's been so long ago, and I think I just wasn't following it as closely, so I don't know a lot about this case. So I'm kind of like with our listeners in discovering something new and interesting. 
Yes, yeah, so um, here we go. We'll just dive right in, and this will be a little unorthodox, but just bear with me. Okay. Um, so I'm going. We're going to call this the Saluda Hotel murder. Okay. Okay. And where's Saluda? So Saluda is a small little sleepy town on uh, the way out of Western North Carolina down into South Carolina, down 26. So off of I-26. Yes. Yeah, so once you pass the Hendersonville area, you're heading. You literally down the mountain. There's a big drop in the altitude and grade there and uh so the, you can you pass the little town of saluda which in my mind i kind of picture it like nestled on the side of a mountain don't they have a coon hunting festival in saluda or uh, like a I'm, coon dog festival i'm not sure um but um that sounds like that could happen in saluda um you know oh it's coon dog day oh wow you yeah. Know, okay. So they have Coon Dog Day in Saluda. I knew I wasn't crazy and that there was something relating to coon dogs. And maybe some of our listeners out there um, have some old coon dogs or maybe they even like to do some coon hunting. I'm sure. That's I'm something sure. I've actually done many times in my life. Is this what I do to you when you're laying out your story? Yeah. It is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it totally oh, is. Oh, wow. Okay, you're... so Saluda... Tiny town. There's only, what, like maybe 700 residents there? Yeah, uh, around, uh, it fluctuates around 700 residents. I think they get a lot of second homers up okay. from, you know, the Greenville, South Carolina, Spartanburg area. You know, escape to the mountain evenings. Oh, yeah, I Kind of thing, that. because uh, it changes, uh, elevation changes a lot within about 20 miles through that area. But, um, yes, it's a very small community, very uh, close-knit. Okay. And so, um, our story takes place in, uh, again, here we go, a, a quiet town called Saluda. It's a very small community of about 700 residents. And on one sunny morning, Jessica Freeman arrived at the Saluda Mountain Lodge to relieve her mother, Vanessa Mintz. Jessica entered the lobby around 9.15 a.m. She heard the TV playing very loudly from the bedroom and noticed the blinds were drawn and the lights were off. The sign on the office said closed. She put her things away and entered the bedroom of the living quarters. So I guess it's one of those deals where, you know, the uh, front desk people have their little area where they, I guess they man it 24-7, seems. Well, yeah, I think most hotels or... Have the little living quarters or whatever. Thing, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, this is weird. I'm not sure I like this, baby, but I'm going to fight through for the for the listeners. They may hate it, too. Okay, so Jessica put her things away and entered the living quarters and saw something on the wall and thought her mother had thrown up. Saw like a spray on the bed and wall. Uh-oh. She shook her mother's foot to wake her, but instantly knew something was wrong because I'm going to assume that it was... Cold. That's what made me think of when I was writing this. Yeah, I was thinking cold, maybe even starting the stiff. Yeah, a maybe bit. even. Oh, yeah. So the Polk County Sheriff's Department. Did you say sheriff? Sh sheriff? No, it's, go ahead. It's cute. Go it's ahead. The say sheriff. It it's the sheriff around here. You know it is. It is? You know it is. Well, I say sheriff. So you I say sheriff? Yeah. Um, that's some uppity ass shit right there. Some college education coming out. Yeah, the big don't use your big city learned ways on me, okay? Okay, baby. Okay, this is horrible, and I, I should have read through this like out loud because I wrote this, guys. If you can't notice. <laughs> okay, so um, the Polk County Sheriff's deputies were dispatched at nine twenty eight a.m. to investigate a gunshot wound and a possible robbery. Upon arriving, officers searched the employee living quarters. They found Vanessa laying in, lying in the bed covered in blood. Oh, no. And so Jessica is the daughter. Yes. So she comes in, finds her mother in the bed, then realizes pretty quickly her mother's been murdered. Yeah, that something's... At first she thought something was terribly wrong. Because there's just like blood-soaked sheets. Right, bedding. her mother's not responding. And then she actually calls back a second time. Oh, how horrible. Because she was directed by her sister. You know how you would obviously call you know, close family, like what's going on. And she was a, a registered nurse. Okay. And um, she said, check for vitals. See if her chest is rising, you know, that those types of things. So she made a second call back to 911 saying now she, because she discovered a wound to her head at that point upon further investigation. 
oh my goodness, can, I can't even imagine as a child, a daughter, finding my mother in this condition. No, or even a friend, let alone your your, your mother. How horrible. Yeah, I mean, it, we talk about this stuff all the time, but sometimes it does help. That's a good point to just step back and think, my God, you know, this is so horrible. Yeah. It is. Um, so, deputies arrived. They, you know, took control of the scene, searched it, and found Van- Vanessa Mintz, um, Jessica's mother, lying in the bed covered in blood. One deputy also discovered a shotgun shell on the floor by the foot of the bed. Okay. The scene was secured, and the medical examiner, Dr. Cornmayer, love his name, pronounced Vanessa Mintz dead at the scene uh, at that time. Okay. So, yeah, they've, they've found her. They've, you know, she's dead. They obviously know it's murder. Brutal scene. Brutal scene. Just I mean, I could on. imagine. Yeah, I so can't. it sounds like there's a spray, you know, blood spray. And so they immediately were thinking there's a robbery motive. Yes, there's a... They think that she's been maybe murdered over, you know, money or something. Which is yes. not uncommon. You hear a lot about motels. Right. Being, I mean, it's yeah, just, a you know, robbed. it's kind of a target. Kind of like a... And I'm not certain, but I think this one's not far off the interstate. You know, yeah, one of those deals where happens. you could pop off, yeah. pop back on. So, you know, kind of a vulnerable, you know, establishment of sorts. Gotcha. But, um, so yes, uh, while the deputies are taking control and, and looking into it, Vanessa's daughter, uh, Jessica, contacts Travis McGraw, her mother's husband at the time, and told him he should come to the hotel right away. Something very, very bad's wrong. You okay. know, she doesn't know what, but something bad's wrong. Something's happened. I bet our mics are going to pick that up. There's like a huge plane that just flew over. Did you hear that? Yeah, I did. We get like just off subject and I'm, I'm doing the Dylan where I'm just going to No, it's you. okay. But off subject, we get a lot of military flyovers. We do. I think they train over these mountains. Well, yeah. And specifically right. like we're in like the flight path of the training. Of a cargo plane it apparently. it seems like... At least two times a week, we get a huge plane fly, and they're low flying. Yeah, and it's loud as hell. What the hell kind of training is that? Where you fly two hundred feet above everybody's head, and if you make one mistake, you crash and like kill everybody. I don't know. Maybe they're just trying to fly in in case they have to deliver supplies or for people to jump out of the planes or something. How, well, I don't know. I wasn't in the air force. Okay, anyway, go ahead. <laughs> this is this really? This is what you deal with. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> So, um, so mom was married. Yes. Um, okay. Jessica contacted Travis McGraw, her yes. mother's husband. Okay, I'm so going to assume her, husband. not her father, and told him he should come to the hotel. Something very bad is wrong. Okay. McGraw was at a restaurant with his two children, his not related to them, previous children. Previous marriage or something? Yes. Okay. And their older children. And, uh, he was at the Cracker Barrel, a southern favorite, and was basically like, I'll, you know, wrap this up and I'll try to get over there. Hell yeah, you can't beat that hash brown casserole at the Cracker Barrel. Yeah, you cannot. The breakfast bar or whatever. Or that, it? like, chocolate Coca-Cola cake? <laughs> yeah, Those I've attempts. never had that. <laughs> well, you're missing out. Okay. Cracker Barrel is rich people food where I came Delicious. from. Delicious, okay. And um, so she found that a little bit strange. And, uh, he well, found yeah, so his wife's been Something's injured. wrong. Something is wrong. I mean, maybe she didn't go into specifics. She didn't want to freak him out, but you need to get over here. I mean, if somebody calls me and and you're at work and I get a phone call from someone, especially your daughter, saying there's something wrong, you need to get over here, I'm going to drop everything. Right. And hopefully you would do the same. Well, especially if you're having Just, freaking lunch with your kid, other yeah, kids. Like, hey, That's I'm, not a big I'm deal. I'm having the, the breakfast menu. Of, yeah, you you're know? going to take my Southern Classic dish back to the, you know, I'm out of here. Who I cares? I want you to box up this uh, here pinto beans with that chow chow on it and that cornbread <laughs> and put it in a little container. I'm taking even, it to the house. I wouldn't even worry about paying. You know, I'm like literally running for my vehicle right? and screaming to, you know, where they're at. Well, exactly. Okay. So, yeah, and she also, um, he typically stayed there with her mother so she actually expected okay. to find travis and her mother there she was there to relieve her mother of her duties and take so over so on the, the nights hotel. when mom worked right 
at the hotel when Vanessa was working and she was on duty and stayed in this little, what I'm going to assume is like kind of a studio apartment. Yeah, right. That her husband would stay with her. Yeah, natural. That makes sense. Right. You're kind of exposed to the public, you know. You never know who's going to blow through the door. Well, yeah, and I mean, a lot of married couples just wouldn't want to 